Um, this is an infant only uh, seat. This seat uh, can only be installed rear facing. Uh, this can be installed with either a base or with a, uh, just a seat belt system. You can see these little hooks right here. Um, this type of seat is designed to carry a child from four to about 20 pounds, depending on the weight limit set by the car seat manufacturer. You would want to make sure that the child fits within the uh, shell of the seat, that, that their head isn't hanging over their top or their feet aren't hanging below the bottom. Um, you want to make sure that when they're installed in, or when they're installed in the seat, when they're in the seat, that the harness straps in the rear facing position are at or below the shoulders. You want to make sure that you're um, not able to pinch more than an inch of fabric so the child is held snugly into the seat um, and it depends different car seat manufacturers have different specifications so you want to uh, make sure that you um, check the instruction manual for the seat some car seat manufacturers um, allow you to transport the child with the handle up and some require that you actually have the handle down um, the next seat is the uh, convertible seat and this type of seat can be used uh, rear facing or forward facing In the rear facing position you want to make sure that the harness straps again are at or below the child's shoulders you want to make sure that you're not able to pinch more than an inch of webbing um, and in the forward facing position you can make some adjustments to the harness straps you want to make sure that they're at or above the child's shoulders and um, you know, the same thing applies with the webbing. You want to make sure that you can't pinch more than an inch. Sometimes this can be adjusted here as your child grows. Uh, so that's pretty much it on that seat. Is there anything you think I should add to that? No. Okay. After the convertible car seat, again, the convertible car seat goes rear facing or forward facing. This is a combination seat, which only goes forward facing. Sometimes uh, you could even skip having the combination seat. It all depends on the weight and height of your child. Some children can go from the forward facing version of a convertible seat right to a booster, but some children may need to do just the forward facing seat. Um, so this, with it being forward facing, it's got the harness strap system in, and again, as Kim has already pointed out, as far as making sure these are snug, you want this harness clip at armpit level. Some of these seats, in order to adjust this, it's simply, you can just pull to tighten, push a button and pull out to loosen your straps. When a child outgrows the forward-facing part of the seat, it can then be converted to a booster seat. When it's converted to a booster seat, all of this comes out. The crotch strap comes out, the harness straps all come out, and then the seat is not installed anymore in the vehicle, usually. Usually it's just placed in the vehicle in the seating position you want it in. The child sits in it. Again, it boosts the child up so that the seat belt fits correctly. Some of them also have guides for the seat belt that um, it can go through so that the seat belt's placed correctly on the child. Um, tether strap. There is a tether strap with forward facing seats. Um, we talked earlier as far as the tether strap attaches to the top of the seat and then it's anchored to a spot in your vehicle and that just gives more stability for the seat and when it's used as a booster though again the seat's not installed so all of this comes out you don't have the top tether and you don't have all of this um, this would be also considered a high back booster so if your vehicle does not have headrest you definitely want to use a high back booster um, so again the combination seats it's a forward-facing seat, which then turns into a booster seat at the appropriate age and the appropriate, appropriate weight and height. And then if you're not using a combination seat, you can use just a booster seat. And you can see that these don't have any harnesses, no harness slots or anything like that. It's just used, again, to boost the child up so that the seat belt fits correctly. This, again, is a high back booster. You're able to adjust this up and down depending on the height of your child. Some of these also, the whole back does come off and you can use what's called a backless booster if you want to hand me the... Sometimes with these seats too, this can be completely removed so then you can just use the base of the seat. And it, right, and again, what determines that is your vehicle. If your vehicle has headrest that will support the child's head, you can get away with just using the backless booster. If you don't have headrest though, however, you need to do that high back. And the high backs are nice too because they do offer some side impact protection. So again, this is a backless booster. 
Um, and that's pretty much it as far as the boosters. Child should stay in the booster seat um, by law. It's going to be until age eight or four foot nine, whatever comes first. But by safety, really, they need to stay in that booster seat till the seatbelt fits correctly. Um, there is a seatbelt test that they can go and take is that have the child sit in the vehicle seat, buckle them in with the seatbelt. If that seatbelt comes across the collarbone, it'd be sitting correctly. It shouldn't touch the neck, it shouldn't touch the face. Also, the lap portion of the belt should be on those upper thighs, on the hips, and not going across the belly. The leg should bend naturally over the vehicle seat. So if all of those criteria can be met, then the child may be ready for a seatbelt. But again, up until then, they should use those booster seats. Okay, the first thing we're going to do today is install this car seat rear facing for babies that are up to a year old and anywhere between 20, 22 pounds, for some seats even 30 pounds, depending on the manufacturer's recommendation for weight, you want to install it rear facing. So the first thing we're going to do is make sure that it is in a reclined position, which it is, and then the way we're going to install it first is using the seat belt. You need to make sure you're using the appropriate belt path. A convertible car seat like this does have two belt paths, one for rear facing and one for forward facing. The next thing you want to do is probably look at your vehicle owner's manual to determine what kind of seat belt system you have. If you're using your seat belt, the seat belt does have to have some kind of locking mechanism. With this vehicle, the seat belt will lock at the retractor. And as you can see, Kim's pulling the seatbelt all the way out to switch the retra retractor to the locking mode. And then she can go ahead and install the seat using the correct belt path. Some seat belts may lock at the latch plate, so you don't have to pull the seat belt out. And that's why it's just important to make sure that you're reading your vehicle owner's manual. Another important thing you want to remember is that the seat belt is not twisted at all. And then as you can see, she's buckling it in. And then what she's going to do is she's going to push the car seat into the vehicle seat and pull to get a tight fit. And again, she switched her retractor to locking mode with this specific seat belt so that it is locked. You want the car seat at about a 45 degree angle. Some car seats do have an angle indicator on the seat, which will tell you if it is in the correct angle. And it's definitely important with a newborn to make sure that we have that appropriate angle so that the head's not falling forward on the baby. In order to check to make sure it's tight, you want to make sure that it doesn't move side to side or forward more than an inch. And you want to do that, check that at the belt path. So where the seatbelt goes through the car seat, that's where you want to hold the seat and check for tightness. Again, we don't want it moving more than an inch. And that is how you do the rear facing car seat using the seatbelt. And I'm going to have Kim just point out to you with this vehicle, you can use the latch. For this vehicle, it looks like on these outboard seats, there's a little tag that shows where there are um, anchors in the bite of the seat. And you can use those, and that's what's called the latch system. Most car seats are not equipped with latches. And she's going to go ahead and show you where those latches are. And with this, with this specific vehicle, we can use latch. Again, you want to look at the owner's manual because not all seating positions in a car are equipped with latch. But if it does allow you to use latch, you just want to make sure that the latch belt for the seat is through the correct belt path. And then buckle them into the hooks in the seat and pull, again, push the seat down and pull tight. So again, you can install it either using latch or the seat belt. And then the seat can also be installed forward facing. So when the child reaches the upper weight limits of this seat for the rear facing mode, 
you would then want to turn it to forward facing. You want to make sure that you put the kickstand down because we no longer want that 45 degree angle. We want the car seat to be upright. And the other thing um, she would have to change on this car seat is the belt path. A convertible car seat has a forward facing belt path. And there are labels on the car seat that will show which belt path to use. So again with the seat belt, she's pulling the seat belt all the way out to switch it to locking mode. Making sure the seat belt's not twisted, she's going to put it through the forward facing belt path. All right, then once we get it buckled in, she will again um, push the seat down and pull tightly. Sometimes it helps if you have an extra set of hands. <laughs> So she's pulling up on that shoulder portion of the belt to get it in tight. And then again to check for tightness at the belt path, she's going to, with just normal force, make sure it's not going back and forth more than an inch. Again with this seat, um, we would typically move the harness straps up to the top slots or wherever so, so that it is either at or ab above the child's shoulder. Some seats require that you use the top slot, so again, you have to read your instructions. With the forward-facing seat, she'll go ahead and show you where the top tether is. And with the forward-facing seat, if your seat does have a top tether and your car does have anchors for it, you definitely want to top tether it. Um, you have to consult your vehicle owner's manual to see if it should go under the headrest or above. And usually, a lot of times, the car is either behind the seat or in the trunk part of the car. There's a metal anchor, and you would hook that top tether to that, to that anchor. And that would be how you would do the forward-facing seat. And then um, we also have a booster seat we can just show you. And again, most booster seats are not actually installed in the car, but they're placed in the seating position where the child will be. And again, the purpose of that booster seat, again, is to boost the child up so that the seat belt fits appropriately. And it's really important to make sure that the child that's in this booster seat does not take that shoulder belt and put it behind their head, because it's not going to do them any good if it's not in the proper place. An important thing, too, of having a booster seat is if the child is not in the car, is not in the booster seat, and you're driving somewhere, you want to always, just like Kim has it here, you always want to still buckle that seat in because if you would be in a crash you don't want it to become a project, projecting object in the car so you want to make sure that you always secure that booster seat whether there's somebody in it or not some of the booster seats also have seat belt guides just to keep the seat belt aligned in the correct spot and again with the new booster seat law coming soon in Ohio it's definitely important that parents get out and get their booster seats for their kids thank you